Yes, once again, it's cloudy and rainy as you can see behind me. No, I'm not gonna film the whole video here. I just wanted you to get a look and see that once again, it's cloudy and raining. So I'm going to be filming this video inside. So let's roll the opening credits so I can get set up. Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Welcome to another eBay video for Friday, July the 12th, 2019. In tonight's video, we're going to talk about the return system on eBay versus the return system on Amazon. Rarely do I ever come out here and talk about Amazon. However, this week I had a first-hand experience on Amazon that I'd really like to relate to you guys. Of course, we're also going to talk about your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. So let's get right to that first. On shipping to Hawaii, Alaska, and Puerto Rico, Hyacinth Bucket wrote, I had one shipment to Hawaii, I had one return from Hawaii. Crosswalk Larry wrote, I had a change of heart, Joe. I bent my rules and sold an item to a guy in Puerto Rico. I found a flat rate box that was no additional cost. The buyer was very happy I sold to him and even let me know when he received it. Gave me a warm feeling inside. Illinois Picker wrote in about having a problem with a buyer. I've been on eBay for almost 21 years now as a seller and just had a message from a newbie buyer that actually violated eBay policy. They sent me a threatening email claiming they would call the police if I email them again. Mind you, this was just after notifying them that the item they paid for was on its way. I reported them to eBay and eBay ended their account before it ever got started. Some people don't have a clue, and that's the kind of behavior that's unacceptable. Thanks for all your videos, and keep them coming. Talking about the most probable fake Vero message I showed you guys last week that another seller received, Grigsol wrote in, Sometimes companies do contact sellers from a direct account without using the Vero format. You can call eBay and ask them about the message. They can tell you if they're associated with the company or not. But from my experience, the message you read does not sound authentic. When I've been contacted directly like that, they normally leave contact information at the end of the message, and they normally do have some kind of feedback score as they do make purchases and get your address and contact information prior to reaching out. It reminds me of the guy that was selling the Velcro condoms. Also on Vero complaints, Nick or Matt Camera wrote, Hi Joe, thanks again for sharing. In my opinion, I think that Vero message you displayed is false because it didn't come directly from eBay. In the past 20 plus years, I've gotten several messages from eBay, along with an auto takedown of some listings that eBay, along with the claimant, claimed to be in violation of either trademark, copyright, etc. Cheers. Black Lotus Boutique wrote, I had to laugh at that Vero complaint. Seems bogus to me. Sounds like some seller not liking the competition. An actual Vero complaint would not go through sending that long message. Fitchy is all, get out. <laughs> In my personal opinion, I also think that that message was fitchy and fake. I've never received a Vero complaint in my over 20 years on eBay, but from what other people have told me, legitimate Vero complaints always go directly through eBay and they will automatically take your item down. Let's continue. Robert K wrote in, Hi Joe, the sign you put on the birdhouse can't be read due to the low contrast. Try the green sign. Originally I had planned to lay the green sign this week over the white one and get your opinion to see if it looks better but with the rain I'm inside so we'll have to wait till next week for that but I'm willing to give it a try Duncan VR wrote in about selling items how about a don't be fitchy hat with a bird on it not a bad idea Mike Tudor wrote congrats on the 15,000 subs Joe thank you for noticing that Mike 
To be honest, I had not even noticed that myself. But just think about it. There are 15,000 people out there that actually care what I have to say. That's mind boggling. So a thank, big thank you to each and every one of you cool people. Cool people, not fishy people. <laughs> Speaking of that, before we go on, let's stop and take drink number one from the Fox News Cup of Life. This is the Fox News Cup of Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. Oh yeah, very good. The last comment I'm going to read before we start a new business today is from Charles Pascal. He wrote a one word comment, which is highly unusual. And that one word is Fitchy. <laughs> okay, mm, enough. Let's talk about returns on eBay versus Amazon. And I want to tell you a first-hand experience that happened to me this week. So let's jump right onto the Amazon section first. As you guys probably know, I rarely buy anything on Amazon. I'm an eBay man through and through. But there are certain things that cannot be found on eBay that can be found on Amazon, such as music downloads, certain books I bought on Amazon. And for that, I found it very useful. Now, as it happens, in a few weeks, eBay Open is going to be held in Vegas, as you know. And every year, one of my thrifting groups puts out t-shirts. And the members that are attending the event will buy a t-shirt and wear it to the event on a specified day for a team picture and a get together. We've been doing this for four or five years now. Each year in the past, I've ordered the t-shirt from Amazon because that's the only place they sell it. And I've never had a problem until this year. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop and show you the t-shirt, what happened, and then we'll go on from there. So this is the actual package the t-shirt came in, okay? I open it up, I take out the t-shirt, I look at it, and right away I can see it's defective. I'm gonna hold this up, and I sure hope you guys can see all this on camera. There are, the shirt is purple, but there are pink bleach spots all over it. Now I'm just gonna move it all around the camera here. This is the back of it. I, I'm sure hoping you guys can get to see this. You gotta see some of those pink bleach spots. They're also on the front of it too, but they're more apparent on the back of it. Okay? Now, nonetheless, I paid money for this shirt, and I don't want a shirt arriving with bleach spots. So the first thing I did was I, I contacted some people in the group to ask them if this was a known fallacy. I'm wondering if maybe a lot of other people were affected. And to my chagrin, apparently I was the only person affected. Hard to believe, but true. So, what would you do in this case? Would you keep the shirt? So would you keep the shirt and just eat it? Or would you try and exchange or return it? I paid good, hard money for this shirt, and I think I should receive a shirt without bleach stains on it. So I attempted to exchange it on Amazon. But for some reason, the only option they gave me was to return it for a refund. So, okay, I'm not opposed to that. I would rather have had the exchange because then this shirt could be on its way to me and I could send this one back. Now it's gonna cost me more time and I may not get the other shirt in time. Okay, you with me on this? But I said, okay, I'll do the return. So I expected Amazon to send me a return label and I just whisked this right off to them. When I filed for the return, I got the message that said, you're all set. You will have this money back in your account within four days. 
there is no need to return this shirt to us. So basically, they're letting me keep this defective shirt. <laughs> it's a true story. It honestly is. So, I found the return aspect on Amazon to be quick and seamless. However, I'm very chagrined that anybody would pack a shirt like that and send it off. For you guys who sell on Amazon, could you please jump in here and tell me something? Are these things packed by hand? Does a person actually pack these things? Or are they all automated and done by machine? Because if a person actually did pack this shirt, I honestly can't understand how they would have packed it with such glaring defects. If it was done by machine, if it's automated, well then I guess things do happen. But for those of you guys who know more about selling t-shirts on Amazon, please let me know in the comment section below how it probably was done and your opinion on that. So yeah, now as far as eBay's return flow, that's something I have much more experience in as far as a seller. But do you know that as a buyer, I cannot tell you the last time I returned an item on eBay, what year it was. So it's 2019 now. I don't think I've returned an item on eBay in over 15 years. I mean that, probably closer to 18 or 19. The last time I can remember returning things was during the early days of eBay when people would sell brand name goods and sell counterfeit junk and send out counterfeit junk. In that case, I was returning the items. But that's probably the last time I actually remember returning anything on eBay. For those of you guys who have accounts on both eBay and Amazon and have returned items on both eBay and Amazon, would you please tell us, in your opinion, which has the better returns flow set up and why? Okay? Now with Amazon, this is the first time in my life I've ever done a return. So I'm not sure if it's always that way or if this was just a fluke or if maybe every first time a gets a return like this. I don't know. But you guys probably know more about Amazon than I do. As far as eBay is concerned, I love their returns flow system. I think it's quick and I think it's efficient. I do have issues with eBay not investigating snag claims. That's one thing I will step right up from the highest mountain and scream about. And if you guys listen loud enough and carefully enough, you'll hear me screaming in about two weeks because I'll be attending some meetings out there and I'm gonna tell the good people what's going on and what I think should be done. And they are going to be listening. And I've been told that there's a change in the works already, so we may hear about it. So yeah, anytime a snag case is opened, there really should be some sort of checks and balances to be sure everything is on the up and up. Because let's face it, a lot of you guys know false snag cases have been opened against you. It doesn't happen to me often, but it's happened to me too, and I know what it feels like. Once again, I'm gonna make a lot of you guys really happy, and I'm gonna keep this week's video very short. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Any comments, questions, and concerns are always welcome. Type away, let me know what you, what you think, what you feel, your position on anything eBay related, or to an extent even Amazon related, because this video does involve Amazon to a point. Guys, as I said, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thanks for watching. I come out here each week to make these videos to try and help you sell on eBay and be successful. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think I did a good job, please tell me in the comments section what to hit up next week and I'll do my best to do it. Remember, I'm a seller friend not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind. I've solved a lot of problems. I'm still making money online. I've never worn a mask. Some say I could be a CEO or a CFO of my own company. Hey, you never know. So yeah, 
By the way, the weekend that just passed was extremely slow for sales because of the 4th of July weekend. Sunday was like a ghost town. It was absolutely awful and disgusting. However, once Monday came, bang, right back to normal. Things were great, sales were jumping. So I had a good sales week and I sure hope you did too. Guys, go out there, make a lot of sales, rock on and peace! Yeah! All right guys, the video is basically over. I've been noticing a huge increase in contacts from either potential buyers, current buyers, or past buyers. I mean a huge increase, and I'm wondering if any of you guys have noticed this as well. Also of note, I received a contact just today, Friday, the 12th of July, from a customer who bought something almost four months ago. Can you believe that? And he bought the wrong size. And he's asking me if there's anything I can do. I said, I clearly stated in the listing the size, the dimensions, everything. I said, all you had to do was get up off your seat, go out, bend down, look at your wheel. Why didn't you do it? I don't get it. Anyway, I gotta go. Guys, three words that are really important. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Drink from the Fox News Cup of Life so I can really enunciate those three words to the max. All right, guys, please remember these three words. Don't be fishy, and I'll see you next week.